The Tom Woods Show, episode 2020. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Hey, folks, chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you are surrounded by irrational, panicked people who think you're a terrible person because you don't want to lock everybody in their houses. No amount of reasoning appears to accomplish anything. And not to mention the media has done nothing but stoke fear and fail to provide context. Well, one of the many benefits you get as a supporter of The Tom Woods Show is membership inside The Tom Woods Show Elite. Recently migrated off Facebook, so if that was holding you back, no longer. This group will keep you sane and informed, and as an added bonus, it won't accuse you of wanting to kill your grandmother. Join me in there at supportinglisteners.com. Hey everybody, Tom Woods here. I am not a numerologist, but maybe there is some significance in the fact that episode 2020 is with Tony Lyons of Skyhorse Publishing. Tony, you are the publisher of this critical book by Robert F. Kennedy Jr., The Real Anthony Fauci. What's the subtitle? I should have it right here, and my desk is a mess this morning. Sure. The subtitle is Bill Gates, Big Pharma, and the Global War on Democracy and Public Health. All right. Well, you have on your hands, a phenomenon of a book because it's the kind of book that the average person wants to read and that people who are not part of the establishment all want to get their hands on. And everybody is saying it's a blockbuster. You won't believe what's in it. You won't believe this guy still has a career after all this stuff. And you have the added bonus that it's written by none other than Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who cannot be dismissed as an incorrigible right winger or anything like that. So first of all, How did you grab this one? I mean, was this a matter of um, his agent was shopping it around and you guys jumped up and grabbed it? No, this is more about the relationship that I've had with Bobby Kennedy over the last 10 years. We published his book on Thimerosal. We published his book on Michael Skakel. So it was the logical thing for us to publish it. And like I said, I've known Bobby for 10 years. I think he's just an incredible man, a true fighter for justice. And, you know, this is a big part of this is his life building up to this moment where he sees these great injustices, this incredible corruption, and he's doing everything he can to fight it. And he's put out this book, The Real Anthony Fauci. It's got a blurb from a Nobel Prize winning scientist. It's been vetted by doctors and scientists and lawyers. You know, there are two sides to each story and there has to be room in our democracy for dialogue and debate. And what's happening here is that the real Anthony Fauci is the best-selling book in America. There's never been a book like this in the history of the United States that's been the subject of a total and absolute media blackout and is still the best-selling book in America. It was number one on NPD BookScan last week and this week. And it's looking very, very strong for the coming week. So that would be three weeks running. It's been censored in every kind of way. It hasn't been reviewed in any newspaper. It's been boycotted by bookstores, which is essentially advertising. So if a book is stacked up in a bookstore, people see it and they're more likely to buy it. So even though it's stacked up in all these ways to prevent you from buying it. So you can't read about it in any newspaper. You don't see it in bookstores. You have to actually go look for it online. And even with those obstacles, it's outselling all of these incredibly well-promoted books, like the Will Smith book. You walk into Barnes and Noble, there are a hundred copies of it stacked up in multiple places, but you can look through that entire store and you won't find a single copy of the real Anthony Fauci. So, you know, this is this is a viral story. This is a grassroots story of people telling their friends, people talking about it in, in, in chat groups. You know, this is this is an amazing story. I'm amazed. Now, for one thing, they did have a documentary on Fauci that came out some time ago, and it was interesting to see the divergence between the critics' opinions and the general public. It was, it was completely lopsided. The critics, of course, worship this guy, and the general public has you know, had it up to here. It seems to me there is bound at some point to be a feature film 
with actors, somebody portraying Fauci. This, and it's going to be all propaganda. He was the wise person over the rest of us stupid heads. And if only we had listened, it'd be, we could all, you and I could sit here and script that movie right now. We know everything that's going to be in it. But every time they try to do this now, this book will be staring them in the face. It'll be another shot in the arm, so to speak, for that book. But what I want to know is the New York Times bestseller list, we all know they don't just go by what's the absolute number of books sold in a week. They have a, an algorithm that they've never really disclosed. And they say they try to look across not just one source. So if everybody buys it on Amazon, that doesn't get you on the New York Times bestseller list. They want to look across the country. But if the book is being kept out of bookstores, then it's in effect – even though I think the New York Times over their dead bodies would they put this book on the list, but it's almost like they've made it ineligible for the list. Well, so let me just go back for one second. You know, they, the mainstream media wants to view this book as, you know, misinformation or some kind of fake news, but they base that just on the title and the subtitle. So I don't believe that any mainstream reporter in America has read this book. So they right. call it misinformation. But like I said, it's got a blurb from a Nobel Prize winner. It's got blurbs from doctors and scientists and lawyers, even an ex-FBI agent who dealt with corruption. You know, this is a book that has 2,194 citations. It's more than 200,000 words long. It's got just incredible research put into it. But the mainstream media can just say that it's misinformation. And bookstores, like you said, all across America can decide not to carry it, publicize it, even allow people to order it. So you go on their bookstore website and they won't take orders because they have this visceral reaction to it that they just don't want to have any part of it. And even with all of that, the book is selling like crazy. And it is, it is the number one book on Amazon charts for the week ended November 28th. It's a number one best-selling book in America. It was number one on USA Today. But like you said, the New York Times, which in its bestseller list is absolutely corrupt. I mean, it is, it is perpetrating fake news. You know, this is the best-selling book in America and the New York Times couldn't totally discount it. There was no way they could do that. So they made it number seven in its first week, even though I have a list of the actual NPD book scan numbers for the week, and it far outsold any other book in America, and they still make it number seven. And they know that their system, that their algorithm for deciding bestsellers, they know that it skews towards specific books and that anything controversial is excluded because the bookstores that report to them, they give an outsized weight to 30 privately owned bookstores that skew in a specific political direction. And they know that. And they don't include bookstores or outlets that skew in the other direction. Yeah. So this is a book claiming corruption at the highest levels of government. And the process of even categorizing how well it's doing and telling the general public how well it's doing is absolutely corrupt. And the New York Times knows that. They're totally aware that individual bookstores, that even Barnes & Noble can make the decision not to carry books, not to publicize them, not to be willing to even sell them. Were you concerned that Amazon might actually censor the book in some way? You know, that's a complicated question. So they have, in recent months, censored some books where they decided somehow, and I don't know what their process is, but they decided. So there was, for example, a book by Alex Berenson that was taken down from Amazon. And there were two or three Skyhorse titles that were taken down and they were flagged as misinformation. Now, there was a process to get them reinstated. In the case of Alex Berenson, he was able to get his reinstated. So you know, at the least there was a process there, but in a way, you know, on this particular book, they have been the main outlet where free speech is possible. So even though in general, you know, I find it dangerous that such a small number of big tech companies can control the news. You know, these are not 
intellectuals. These are not government officials. These are random decisions that are made of what's real news and what's fake news. And it's obviously skewed. It's just so clearly skewed. But Amazon, in this particular case, has been the outlet that has sold, you know, more than 90% of the copies. Okay, okay. Well, they're going to, you know, they're going to make a bundle. So they, you know, there is, at least they understand that, that part. It's interesting to me, people whose ideological commitments are such that their normal desire to make money is suppressed. Right. I mean, there, there has to be a way that people all around the country who want a book can just go buy that book if they're interested in it. You know, this is a country that's talked about free speech for, you know, since the Constitution was written. And now free speech is getting crowded out from every direction, you know, from lack of reviews, from lack of advertising possibilities, big tech companies saying that that you can't advertise certain books, just not allowing you to advertise, but based on based on what? Based on keywords, based on on algorithms. You know, that's not free speech. That's starting to look like countries that we've vilified over the you know last few decades we're we're becoming like those countries and we have to be very careful to fight that in every way we possibly can i mean this is this book outsold any other book in america despite all these obstacles we have no idea what it would have sold if it wasn't absolutely stacked against selling yeah and i mean this this is based on this on this myth that Bobby Kennedy and other people are somehow anti-vaccine and therefore they're dangerous people. But first of all, books are supposed to be dangerous. Books are supposed to be something where you read a point of view that maybe you have a visceral disagreement with, but you learn something from it. And if anything, this is a book you're going to learn a lot from. I mean, this is an incredibly well-researched book. But in any case, you know, Bobby Kennedy isn't anti-vaccine. This is a book about corruption. Bobby Kennedy is anti-corruption and he's pro-vaccine safety. And you have to be allowed in this country to say that these major pharmaceutical companies, that big pharma is out to just make as much money as they can, because they all know, we all know that that's true. We all know that these companies, time after time, have been criminally fined for their practices. They are out to make money. They're not concerned with public health. And there's no doubt about that. So this is this is not an anti-vaccine book. This is not an not a some kind of countercultural book in in that sense. This is a book about fighting corruption, about getting to a point where we can trust our government, where we can trust the people who make drugs in America, that we can trust the research that was done. You know, there was some research project done that said that, you know, something like 90% of the research done on medications in America is funded by the companies that are going to make money from those drugs, from those vaccines. So we're in a really precarious position here. And we should be grateful for somebody like Bobby Kennedy spending, you know, writing a book 16 hours a day for nine months of his life. He's not making a penny in royalties on this book. He doesn't care about the money. He has no conflict of interest. But everybody who he's going after, they have conflicts of interest. I mean, the real Anthony Fauci, it's about Dr. Fauci to some extent, but it's about a corrupt system that should make us all angry. Hey, everybody, let's take a minute to thank our sponsor, BitTrust IRA. A lot of people have been putting crypto into their IRAs. And if you're thinking of doing the same thing, adding Bitcoin to your retirement account, the best way is through BitTrust IRA. The crypto world can be confusing. It's hard to know where to get started. These guys will help you. BitTrust IRA stores your private keys in nuclear bunkers with military-grade encryption. And by the way, when they say nuclear bunkers, that isn't just hyperbole where they're saying it's really, really secure. We're actually talking about decommissioned nuclear bunkers. They have a 24-7 trading platform with no minimum investments and unlimited trades, plus a team to help guide you along the way if you have any questions. They also offer the lowest trading fees in the industry. So how do you get started? Go to bittrustira.com slash woods today to learn more. And for a limited time, Bittrust IRA is waiving the sign-up fee for Tom Woods Show listeners. That's a $50 value. 
That's bittrustira.com slash woods, B-I-T-T-R-U-S-T-I-R-A dot com slash woods. You know, you were talking just now about uh, who funds what, and Fauci himself has to be mentioned here. Fauci presides over billions of dollars in research grant money. And by an interesting coincidence, everybody wants to be on his good side. Gee, I wonder why. What's wrong with pointing that out? Yeah, there shouldn't be anything wrong with pointing that out. This is a constitutional democracy. and You have to be able to make the claim, to make the accusation that your leaders, unelected officials, are corrupt. I mean, Bobby Kennedy, like I said, he's a Democrat, but this is not about being right or left. This is really about right or wrong. You know, this is about being on the right side of history. We're going down the rabbit hole here. We're allowing a small group of people to control the information that's disseminated to the public. And it's really backfiring because the real Anthony Fauci is still the best selling book in America, even with all these roadblocks thrown up, even without this comprehensive program to make people less likely to find out about the book, to be able to buy the book easily. It's just absolutely unheard of that the best-selling book in America that the general public is clamoring for, that they're fascinated with, that they want to know what Bobby Kennedy has to say about corruption in America. And I mean, this is serious corruption that affects millions and millions of people, not only in the United States, but all around the world. And there is this total media blackout. So, you know, you won't read about it in any newspaper anywhere. It hasn't been covered by any other TV show other than Tucker Carlson, who was very brave to uh, cover this story extensively. But once again, it's not about being a Democrat or a Republican. It's not about being right or left. You know, this is this is about something that's just wrong, you know, that this kind of censorship can't be OK. You have to be able to hear both sides of a story my own publisher, Regnery, which I've used a few times, they used to be of the opinion that if, unless you're a huge, huge name, you know, and obviously you're dealing with a huge name, but if you're, an, if you're an essential unknown like me, the traditional book tour is just not profitable and it's silly to try. Instead, you should stay home and just do a lot of radio shows. So there's still plenty of... Now, again, obviously this is a message that needs to get out to the whole public, not just one ideological corner of it. But it seems to me there's got to be a lot of radio stations who would love to talk to him. Yeah, so he is definitely doing radio and doing podcasts. You know, but the point here is that the mainstream media is doing everything they can to ignore this book, to have this book just kind of disappear. And the general public is not allowing that to happen. And that's a fascinating thing because, yes. you know, there are a bunch of cases in the last year where that kind of thing happened, where people tried to censor books, whether it was on the right or the left, because this really isn't about right or left. This is about, this is about corruption. This is about censorship. You know, this is about the country becoming fascist. And this is a book that's incredibly well detailed, that is designed to raise all kinds of questions and to encourage people to investigate things themselves. You know, with 2,194 citations, this is something that the media doesn't do anymore. You know, the, the mainstream media is just pandering to its base. And it's just about power, and it's about getting a specific message out. And in a lot of cases, it's a message that's connected to their advertisers. Well, so are you pursuing a different strategy with this book than you would with other books? Do you have, are you using social media? I mean, he could make little videos. You could get, those could go viral. Just whatever you could do to get around the gatekeepers. Yeah, so we have really tried that hard, but advertising online is very, very difficult. So Bobby Kennedy did a book signing for, once again, the real Anthony Fauci, and the book signing did really, really well. And we taped that book signing. It was put up on online. And then YouTube took it down as misinformation. Oh, So they're taking down a dialogue about a book that has blurbs 
you know, I realize that I've said this now, you know, a couple of times, but it has blurbs from doctors, lawyers, scientists, somebody who won the Nobel Prize. But, but more than that, it's a book about a man, a book about a man who's been placed on a preposterous pedestal in our society. And the idea that any attempt to have a more realistic appraisal of this man is ipso facto misinformation is absurd. I mean, that's right out of the Soviet Union. It is. And it's sort of like anything is a conspiracy theory till it's proven to be correct. And so even that kind of word is totally misused now. So if you had written a book about Governor Cuomo last year, when so many people were obviously, you know, wrongly holding him up in the same way that they hold up Fauci, everybody would have considered that to be misinformation. You would have been kept off bestseller lists. Your credibility would have been questioned. There would have been no reviews of the book. But now, when all those things have been proven true, it's a totally different situation. So, you know, how do we know? How does the general public know that they haven't been sold a bill of goods here? And yeah. the way they can find that out is to actually read the book and decide for themselves and see that there are two sides to each story, track down some of these 2,194 citations, look at the blurbs by all these incredible doctors, lawyers, scientists, and then start to make a judgment for themselves. I mean, that's what happens in a democracy. Had he been following the career of Fauci before 2020? I don't really know. Because I'd be curious about that, because of course Fauci's been around for a long time. And um, basically people in the LGBT world knew who he was from the 1980s. But he's kind of been in the background. Nobody probably, almost nobody knew his name until 2020. But I wonder if a guy like RFK had always kind of had him in his sights. Like, I don't really trust this guy. That'd be, that'd be something I'd be curious to ask him about. But, you know, the thing is, that, of course, they're proving his point because if the, if the world really does work the way Kennedy is claiming it does, this is precisely how they would treat a book like this. Exactly like this. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, well, look, obviously I want people to read it because why not? <laughs> right? I mean, I don't usually go by, it's not that it's a popularity contest. It's not because it happens to be the best-selling book in the country, but it's a worthy book. There are a lot of books that are the best-selling book that are not really, you could really let them go and we would, the world wouldn't miss them. But really you have, as I had Ken McCarthy on my show last week and he said, look, this is the book and the time have, have met. This is the, the villain of our, of our day. And I mean, they're probably half the country views him as a great villain and the other treat him with religious veneration. Well, that's the book that needs to be written. And here it is, actually, I, I don't know anybody who would have been able to churn out a book like that, cited that heavily in such a short period of time and actually have it out. I mean, you guys at your publishing house, you must have really crashed this book because typically it's like a year before a book comes out. Oh, definitely. We were right in the middle of it. We were working on it day and night. You know, this was a major project for us. And I don't think there's any other publishing company that would have done what we did. It's not that they couldn't do it. It's just that they wouldn't do it. Yeah, right, right. I saw an article recently, I don't know what that, probably in the Atlantic, and it was an extremely condescending RFK piece. And it was saying that, well, you see, RFK is the kind of guy who he would fight against polluters and, and this and that in the private sector. And so his problem is he can't distinguish between bad actors in the private sector and good ones. And so he's just naturally inclined to think that big pharma must be bad because it's in the private sector. I mean, I am virtually certain that is not his opinion. It was a cartoon version of the way he thinks. But that is also stunning when you look at the number of criminal fines that these companies have received, you know, and that there's an inherent corruption in that entire process now where you can have pharmaceutical companies that get criminal fines for their practices and the harm that their practices do to individuals, but no individual at those companies is guilty of any crime. So the company itself is guilty, right? So it yeah. is a really odd thing. And places like the Atlantic ought to investigate that rather than go after somebody who's genuinely, with no conflicts of interest, fighting corruption in any way he can in all different areas for years and years of his life. 
you know, and to his detriment, you know, to to the extent that that his own family goes against him. You know, I mean, he's a really serious guy. He's a researcher. He's a guy who's going to fight for the rest of his life for the things that he believes in. I mean, how many people do that these days? People are looking out for all of their interests and they have their own little personal conflicts of interest. You know, here is somebody who's really fighting hard. We should be grateful to him. We should thank him for doing this and, and not put out these puff pieces that look like they're paid for by the people who Bobby Kennedy is claiming are corrupt. Well, the book is The Real Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, Big Pharma, and the Global War on Democracy and Public Health. I will link to it at tomwoods.com slash 2020. I still can't get over This is episode 2020 (laughs) of all possible numbers that it could have been. So uh, I don't know how you follow up after a book like this. (laughs) Sorry to say it's all downhill after this one, but I think this one is likely to have legs because it doesn't look to me as if Fauci's going anywhere. This could be selling and selling for quite some time. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be like other bestsellers because I think that the demand for this book is much, much higher than even the number one best-selling book tag that it has shows. Because like I said, everybody, I mean, from all different areas have been fighting to squash this story. And I think people are being, you know, people are tired of being told what to do, you know, during the pandemic. You know, they're tired of being told what to think. And I think people are ready for a story like this that has an incredible number of details that, that, draws into question all kinds of fundamental things that people believe and that they want to investigate, that they want to get to the bottom of. And that's what the real Anthony Fauci offers to the American public, the other side of the story. Well, you can have that book in your hands instantaneously if you get the Kindle version and almost instantaneously with the hardcover. If you check out the link at tomwoods.com slash 2020. Well, continued good luck, Tony. I mean, in terms of the outcome, I'm sorry for all the frustration, but at the same time, you have a, a major phenomenon on your hands and, uh, and I'm happy for you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on. All right, folks. Today, I am on my way down to Texas because I will be speaking at the Ron Paul event, which I'm sorry to say is sold out. I'm happy that a lot of people are coming, but I'm sorry that if you haven't got a ticket, you can't go now, but it's going to be a good event. I'm hoping to be able to play for you my remarks there. It's a retrospective on the Ron Paul revolution. We're going to look back on it, look at the victories that were won, the work that still remains, and it's going to be great. Glenn Greenwald is calling in from Brazil through the video feed, and uh, we're going to have Lou Rockwell as a special guest, Jeff Dice to be speaking. It's going to be a great event, and as I say, I'll share with you what I had to say there. So I got to head on out the door. I'll see you next week. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of the Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at Podsworth.com.